Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is the Foundations of Math course preparing you for either the ASVAB arithmetic reasoning or mathematical knowledge portions of the entry exam, preparing you for a union math entry exam, contractors exam, any place you need a standardized math exam, this course will help you. Right now we're on chapter 14. It's the first part of geometry. I'm going to go through some of this, some of these ideas. It's really just a broad overview and I'm going to split geometry into two parts. Part one today, part two next week. And then I'm going to have some sample problems from the ASVAB uh, mathematical knowledge at the end. You know, I would have your notebook in front of you when you take this. If there are pieces that are missing, you might want to go back and watch those previous chapters. The whole point of this course is if you've got some holes in your math learning, to fill in those holes and move on to build a solid foundation so you can move forward. Math actually isn't really that hard. The issue with math is it's so cumulative based on the previous section, that if you got holes in your education, in your math education, then it becomes near impossible. So this video course is trying to fill in those holes so that we could all move forward together. Okay, so this is chapter 14, a very broad overview on geometry. I split it into two parts. Part one, what we're gonna go over is lines, parallel lines cut by a transversal, triangles, the different types of triangles, Pythagorean theorem, sum of angles, linear pairs, perimeter, and area. In part two, we're going to go over circles and quadrilaterals. So let's go ahead and start right here on part one, just talk about lines. So a line is denoted with arrows on both ends to say it is infinite. It, go, it keeps going in both directions. You could have a ray with a starting point and an arrow or a segment that would have a starting point and an end point. If I have one line and then another line, and these two lines are parallel, sometimes denoted with double arrows, meaning that these two lines continue and they will never cross. So if I have parallel lines cut by a transversal line, it gives me eight different angles. These four angles here and these four angles here. This angle right here is larger than 90. It is called obtuse. So let's say, for example, it's 100 degrees. This angle and this angle together are called a linear pair, two angles that sum to 180 degrees. This angle would be acute, meaning less than 90. So we have acute, less than 90, right, exactly 90, obtuse, greater than 90. These are a linear pair. If this is 100, this is its supplement, meaning the other angle that's going to add up to 180. Um, which is 80. So if this is 100, this is 80. Again, this blue line is my transversal. This angle and this angle are considered vertical angles. They are equal. They are opposite each other and they are equal. Um, the way you sometimes note equal is you put a little line there to say they are congruent. If that's 100, this is 100. Well, if this is 80, then this is 80. And then now I have those four angles, and these four angles are going to work out the same way as well. So this right here, these are called corresponding angles. These would be the same. If I know this one, then I know this one. Its linear pair is 80. This one is its vertical angle, 100. If this is 80, this is 80. Also verticals. These are sometimes called alternate, meaning opposite sides of the line interior because they're inside the parallel lines angles these are alternate exterior angles alternate exterior angles a lot of this math is really just the vocabulary here's a sample of math knowledge um, problem from the ASVAB test I just got this off the internet it is from gotestprep.com you could go to that website to find more information um, so here's the problem. First thing I do is I read through the problem. If lines A and B are parallel, that's what we're talking about, and are intersected by line C. So that C is saying that's intersection. Angle 2 is 30 degrees. I'm going to write this in there, 30 degrees. What is the measure of angle 7? So I'm looking for this angle right here. Well, I could go through that whole process, vertical angles, alternate interior angles, or I could just see that these are alternate exterior angles. If this is 30, this is also 30. There's answer A right there. And that's how easy it is once you know some of that terminology. Okay, let's talk a little bit about types of triangles. Triangles, three sides, try. 
This one's the most common. This little box down here is saying this is 90 degrees. It is a right triangle. And there's a lot of things that hold true only for right triangles. The Pythagorean theorem will only work in a right triangle. This triangle right here, these little marks are saying this is equal to that, equal to that. So all three sides are congruent, meaning equal. If all the sides are equal, it is called the equilateral triangle. And if all three sides are equal, that means all three angles are equal. All three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, but because they are all the same in this case, they all have to be 180 divided by 3 or 60 degrees. The size of the angle is dependent on the length of the side. That's kind of a big idea. And then this right here, it looks similar to this equilateral triangle, but I'm told only two sides are congruent. So this is an isosceles triangle right there. That means only two sides are equal. But let's say if I knew this was 40 degrees, I know this angle and this angle are congruent because the sides opposite them are congruent. All three angles have to add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 40, that leaves me with uh, 140. 140 divided by two means these two have to be the same and all three angles have to add up to 180. So I got 70 and 70, 140, 180. These two are the same. A couple other triangles is if I have one angle greater than 90, it's considered obtuse. Again, obtuse is greater than 90. If all angles are less than 90, it's considered acute, or you could have a right triangle. Moving on to Pythagorean theorem, this is a leg, this is a leg, this is a hypotenuse. If I have the two legs, let's say this is three and this is four, I could find the hypotenuse. And the Pythagorean theorem is one leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. I have a previous section a little more on triangles and also on trigonometry. You might want to go back and watch those chapters. So I have one leg is three squared plus the other leg squared equals, I don't know what this is, I'll call it C squared. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16. It's equal to C squared. Nine and 16 is 25. C squared is equal to 25, square root of both sides. C can either be five or negative five, but we're talking about the length of a hypotenuse, so we discard the negative and the answer is five. All right, sum of angles. We talked a little bit about this before. This right here is called a linear pair. So if this is 120 degrees, this has to be its linear pair, also called the supplement, two angles that add up to 180. 180 minus 120 is 60. So that's 60 degrees right there. Um, if this is a triangle, say, and I know this angle out here is now 140 degrees, I would do 140 minus 180. That would give me this angle right here is 40 degrees. And then I can find that third angle because all three angles add up to 180. 60 and 40 is 100 plus 80 gives me 180. All right, here's another example problem right here. Go ahead and find all angles in this triangle right here. We're going to use sum of angles and linear pairs to do that. Pause the video and do that, and then watch how I do it. Okay, so here's a linear pair. These two together add up to 180, so this has to be 50. This thing right here and this thing right here are the same. So that means the angles opposite them have to be the same, so this also has to be 50. And then the sum of all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So I got 50 and 50 plus 80 gives me a total of 180 degrees. All right, looking at perimeter and area. Um, area of a triangle is one half base times height. So in this case right here, it's going to be pretty easy. The leg is also the height of it. The base is four. So it's going to be one half of the base times the height. One half times four is two, two times three is six, so my area is six. If this is inches and this is inches, then this is six square inches. The perimeter is the length all the way around. So again, I'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem or maybe even some right triangle trig to find the other pieces. Um, but we did this one earlier, four squared plus three squared is equal to five squared and it would also be in inches. 
and then the perimeter is the length around the outside. Four plus three is seven, plus five is 12. Here's another obtuse triangle, meaning that the angle is greater than 90 degrees. The altitude for this triangle is actually outside of it. Let's say the altitude or the height is two, and the base here is five from here to here. It's still base times height divided by two. Five times two divided by two is equal to five, so the area of this triangle right here would be five. To find the perimeter, you'd have to find all three sides and add them all up. A little bit about triangles. Chapter 15 is going to be the second part of geometry, but right now let's go over to some more sample problems. Again, I'd have your notebook in front of you, take a note, and then do the problems before I do them. Pause the video, do the problems, and then watch how I do them. So here's one right here, which of the following with the equilateral triangle. Well, this is an isosceles triangle. This is a right triangle. This is a hexagon. And then this is the only one where all three sides have to be the same. So it's going to be answer D. Again, it's really a vocab question to know whether or not you know what equilateral triangle is. All right, here are a couple more triangle problems. In the following equilateral triangle, what is the measure of angle one? Well, again, if they're all three the same length, all three angles have to be the same. They have to sum the 180. So angle, all angles are 60, so angle one is 60 degrees. Go ahead, pause the video, uh, do this problem, and then I'll do it. If angle one is 34 degrees, if you're taking a paper test, I mark it up as much as I can. Um, what is the measure of angle two? All of this is a distractor. You just need to know this is its linear pair. 180 minus 34 is 146. There's the answer right there. Another triangle problem, the same one as I use in the example. It's called a Pythagorean triple because they always work out to be integers, so there are no decimals or square roots. The directions say, what is the length of AB? You recognize it as a right angle. This is the hypotenuse. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared right there. If the numbers weren't a Pythagorean triple like that, you might have to leave it in a square root or a decimal approximation. Another right triangle, what's the area of this right triangle? Because it's a right triangle, I have base times height, 8 times 4, 32, times a half, 16. Double check my units, feet and feet is square feet. So that's the answer right there, answer D. Okay, um, I'll put a link in the description to all previous chapters and some practice tests. The final exam for this course is going to be an ASVAB arithmetic reasoning and mathematical knowledge exam. Again, it's really um, useful in any standardized math exam, whether you're getting into college and it's a math placement, the, the basics are essential, applying for a union. Um, all, everything kind of requires a standardized math test, and this course is designed to make you more successful at it. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them.